Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today is another just vlog, follow me around, living alone, doing things type of video. And I have a dinner party that I'm doing that I'm so excited to show you. And I'm just excited to get started overall. But we also have some other things that we're doing. Okay, however, before we get started, this video is sponsored. Da, 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 da. This video is sponsored by Organic Basics. It's no secret that I've been hesitant to work with Organic Basics following their merger with Dell Tech Alil. And because I wanted to make sure that all the things we knew from Organic Basics before were still applicable. And they recently got back on track with their GOTS certification and their B Corp certification. I followed their progression to see if they had similar values, similar supply chains, similar textiles, similar working environments, similar resource use, all this kind of stuff. And after many conversations back and forth where I was able to ask them everything on my mind and I feel comfortable sharing these products again, which I am continuously impressed by. One of the things that I talked with Organic Basics about a whole lot is now that they are working under a different bigger company that also owns other clothing brands, if the profit from Organic Basics, so the money you put into the brand when you buy something from them, will that profit then be put into the production of clothing from these other companies that I would never Support. And I was assured by Organic Basics that that couldn't and wouldn't happen. I got three products from their Flex Cotton Collection, both a bodysuit, a t-shirt and a pair of underwear. I'm thoroughly impressed with these products. They are so comfortable and I love how they're made and what they're made of and the entire. Of course, there's also a discount code. So use Gitima Reflex if you choose to buy anything. I'll leave a link down below to the things that I wear as well. So thank you so much for sponsoring this video. Now let's get into it. So that's how I start my day, the vibes are real. My shower routine involves the tiniest piece of solid shampoo, I really need to fix that, a piece of solid body soap and this natural loofah which is 100% compostable because it's a dried plant. My trusty leaf shaver, I've used this for years, I love it, I think it's the Twig model. Oh yeah, and I also use a solid conditioner. And the shower bucket is still going strong, by the way. So the excess water from my shower I use to flush my toilet. My deodorant is from Wild in this reusable applicator and my toothbrush is from Humble. Right now I'm in between two types of toothpaste, one from Humble in a glass jar and a more conventional one in recycled plastic, where the tube can also be recycled again. Both of them have fluoride, by the way, but I am slacking on this zero waste dental routine, but that's how it is. The vibe is immaculate. I'm hosting a dinner party tonight for three of my friends. I am very excited. I'm gonna take some inspiration from my new upcoming cookbook. By the way, it's available for pre-order in Danish. I'm going to build on some of the recipes from the book, but I'm also going to do some new things. And I just went shopping and got a few things that I need. The rest I already have. These are the things that I needed to get. I couldn't avoid plastic altogether, but overall I think I did pretty well. And then I have the rest in my kitchen already. I'll take you guys with me through the day and sort of show you some of the process. I think we're gonna end up at three or four dishes, preferably four, but I don't know where we're gonna end on that. The last dish is sort of like, uh, uh. Um, but at least three, which is um, a lot lower than the last time. Last time I think I did seven. I don't know why I ended up at seven, but just, like things developed and it might do that as well today. Anyway, stay tuned. First order of business is making vegan ladyfingers and the way I'm doing that is with aquafaba, aka Magic, aka the water from chickpeas. Just whisk them and they're fluffy and nice. Uh, I need to add sugar and vanilla extract and add my flour mixture. It's gonna be great. Forgot that I gave the rest of my sugar to my neighbors. So I'll have to go out again. Luckily these can just be re-whisked um, into new stiff peaks. So that's gonna be fine. But I don't wanna go outside again. Also just started raining. <clears throat> Okay, well I need sugar and I actually also need active yeast, so I will have to go out again. But I think before I do so, I'll just set this project aside and do some of the other things that I need to do because I'm making a parsley sauce and I want to infuse an olive oil with parsley. So I think I'll just prep all those things so they can just have as much time as they need and then I'll go outside again. Oh my God, this is so annoying. I thought I had sugar. Anyway, we're prepping a green oil for the sauce. And just letting it run through a cheesecloth. The leftovers, all the gunky bits. I think the gunky bits is official terminology. It's gonna be so nice and green. Okay, now I'm also gonna prep the base for the 
plant-based mascarpone cream because we're making tiramisu, which I'm very excited about. So what you do is that you make a soy milk curdle because when you add lemon to soy milk, it curdles up. We're gonna need those curdles. We're gonna whisk them through with a plant-based cream and we're gonna make a really, really nice creamy mascarpone. It's gonna be perfect. I'm using a soy milk with a little bit of vanilla. I think that's gonna work really well as well. So we're gonna do that. Okay, I don't know how much, um, so I'm just winging a lot of this, honestly. So I think what we do is that we'll get this to simmer while, when it's simmering, add in the lemon juice. I think the juice of one lemon should be fine. And then we're just gonna take it off the heat and let it curdle up. Once it's cooled down, I can save it. And when I need it, I can whisk the cream into it. Go team. Now I don't need to use the weird Alessa lemon squeezer, but we're just gonna do it. It's weirdly impractical, but here we are. And it's not even the worst lemon squeezer in the world. It's just maybe not the best, but we are using it. Look at that, look at it go. There's a vine joke to be made here, but I'll just leave it at that. Okie dokie. Now I'm just gonna let that just sit on low heat for a while, then take it off the heat completely and let it rest until I need it. Last thing that I'll be doing before headed out the door, it's still kind of raining, so I feel like I'm okay with prep, is that I'll be making a gel veil for one of my dishes and I will be using beetroot. I have this vision and I don't remember where I saw it. I saw it on Instagram. Someone made a little gel veil with a marbled effect of two different colors. I wanna do that, I wanna do that so badly. I don't exactly know how to do the marble effect, but I have an idea. So that's what we're gonna do. First of all, I'm gonna take the beets, I'm gonna puree them into a little juice, gonna use a little bit of water, and then I'm gonna add chili so we have a nice flavor profile for the veil. It's not just for decoration, but we also need to add flavor to it. And then I'm gonna do a second um, juice, also with the beetroot, but with a ton, maybe not a ton, but with some leek ash and activated charcoal to make it black and so to have that flavor profile going back and forth to have the red and the black up against each other all marbled up i think that could be really really nice so let's see how that goes anyway uh we're gonna parade oh my god no <laughs> yeah Woo! a little bit of a gamble up against my light trousers, but we will prevail. Now I'm using pickled beets for this because I love the flavor of pickled beets. And I think in my last cooking video, it ended up sounding like I didn't like beets at all. I just prefer them pickled. I think the vinegariness of them, just amazing. This is the chili I will be using. It's a crushed up chili and garlic oil. It's very, very good. So here I have the juice and next to it I have the solid that I strained and I'll be using this in a pate that I'll be making for the year starter dish. The pate will also be based on the chickpeas that I have left over from the aquafaba production. When you're making things like this and you have a vision for the elevation that you want to achieve, it's easy to forget your zero waste kitchen habit, the ways you're usually trying to avoid food waste, but having those in mind, even when you're trying to achieve something that's a little bit above everyday food, is massively important. To make plant-based gels, I am using agar agar. You simply heat up your liquid just below the boiling point. Add in your agar agar. I think I'm using just a half a teaspoon for 100 milliliters, so not a lot. And then you cool down your liquid. And, and bada bing, bada bong, it's all of a sudden, Gel. Anyway, the first one is ready, so I think I have to work a little fast to do this. I'll talk about how I did this later, I think. I think that's the best option. So like that. Okay. So I simply heated up the two liquids one at a time, very fast with the second one, but I also had just a little smidge of it. And then I just poured it together and it's looking... I'm in awe. I hope this works. This is what it looks like now. You are not ready for how I'm picturing the final result. Okay. I don't know why I started doing it. I don't know what's happening. Anyway, I hope you don't mind the noise. I'm cooking some chickpeas that I'll need to use for a pate. I just wanted to show you the gel because it's set and it's it's beautiful. So, I, I mean, I mean, I mean. Uh... 
I'll be cutting them out into these thin slices and I think the effect is it's it's so nice anyway I'll put this back in the fridge so I finally got the sugar and I made my ladyfinger batter I have it in this mold um, so hopefully they'll turn out nice and even and for the rest of the batter I am making some small twill I did this in the last video as well but with a different type of mold and today we're making small branches we're gonna bake these uh, 180 for 15 minutes question mark I'll see what happens a little update but this is where we are with the soy curdle I have to whisk this until it's smooth now but it's it's pretty solid like ricotta um, and this is amazing and I, I love using this in all different types of dishes but I haven't used it to make tiramisu before so I'm very excited about that and another this is where we are at they're very spongy and nice and I think this is going to work I constantly feel surprised when things actually work out but during the process of making the cookbook and generally just being really adventurous and experimentative in the kitchen you often fail that's a really big part of it and sometimes your technique isn't correct sometimes the measurements aren't correct you will experience when cooking and trying out new dishes that things don't work out the way you want to and it will happen hundreds of times over and over again but sometimes you get it right and I am just very excited whenever that happens and whenever you sort of feel like the result is what you thought it was going to be love that to bits so uh yeah i'm just really really happy that things are working out so well also i'm wearing my grandmother's scarf and i just feel like i feel like it's working out anyway continuing this is what the soy curdles look like after i've blended them nice and creamy and speaking of things that's working out the lady fingers out of the oven and i just had to taste one so light and fluffy. Moving on, we're soaking the ladyfingers in espresso. Just a little test there to see how long I need to soak them before they soak up enough liquid. An update on the starter. So I made this pate with the beetroot and chickpeas and I put them into a little mold. I'll just, one second. So I put this in the freezer. I have the pate in the mold. I just popped four of them out. We're gonna be four, so I'm gonna stick these four in the, in the freezer again. I love this. Um, so we're gonna serve this on a tiny little a piece of bread and then with a veil on top I think it's gonna be neat um, I love the cute little shapes these are the potatoes I'm serving were cut out with a little steel ring also a fallen soldier but I broke my nail that's how it is but the rest of it all the leftovers aha we're gonna make a little dip or cream with mashed potatoes instead and um, so that's gonna be used also I'll be using my green glass for this dinner. I think it's so nice to see the different types of green, the different types of styles of glass. Also I ironed my table cover. I just iron it straight onto the table. I just make sure the setting is appropriate and not too hot so it doesn't burn your table. But I haven't had any issues as long as you move it around constantly. I saw them do this at restaurants and I thought what a life hack insane um so that's what i do now that's the only way i go about it at this point also all the glasses are thrifted vintage secondhand heirlooms some type of pre-loved situation i also added a little wooden placemat that i think works super well and i got my plates so they're pretty neutral the plates and then you know the food will be pretty colorful and the cutlery i went for a more romantic vibe so we have tons of small squiggles and just it's my most favorite silverware and I use this daily as well but I think it works really well for them. I try to organize the plates diagonally so we have two similar squiggly plates on each side. I've done that before and then some more high side plates on each side here. Um, but these are for the starter so I'll remove the plates and arrange the food in the kitchen then bring it in. Okay! Also this glass looks so much like one of the Lego glasses. Um, I love this. Found a little friend in my broccoli. It's alive. It's just scared, I guess. So we'll place it here. See if something happens to it. So when I put in the tiramisu, it was extremely liquid. Like when you're making ice cream from scratch liquid. But now it's setting. Um, and it still has a couple of hours until we have to eat it, so I'm actually really hopeful. I decided to go with the fourth dish, by the way, which is going to be the second serving, because I made a uh, mashed potatoes, uh, which I'm snacking. Uh, well, 
um, because I needed to use it for a dip, but the rest of it, because I had a lot, because I made copious amounts, I put into a little silicone mold that's in the freezer now, and we're going to make some nice and serve with a dip that I made for the main dish, which is this herby dip that I made with a little bit of vegan from fresh, some avocado, and then the um, parsley that was left over from the the seagulls here going crazy. But it has the bits of parsley that was left from the oil making. So, using everything. Okay! The dinner party went amazingly. There are some things I would like to do differently. Next time I'm making the tiramisu, even though it's set and solidified pretty well in the dish, I would prefer next time to serve them in small individual dishes instead, because there was simply not a way of cutting the tiramisu whilst making it look really chic and nice. So yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do next time. I am absolutely flying today because I'm wearing some clip-on earrings that my mom has made. And um, these ones, just gonna pick them out. And my grandmother has worn these ever since I can remember. I recently got them from her and I am so excited. Me and my grandmother, just look, fixing this. Me and my grandmother are the only women in our family that doesn't have pierced ears. So we have always bonded over clip on earrings and I love that I can wear these. Anyway, I have an errand that I need to run because I have the greasiest hair of all time. And my shampoo bar isn't cutting it right now so I need to get a new shampoo bar and the last bits of the shampoo bar that I currently use is going into the soap jar. If you don't know what the soap jar is I keep all my scrap soaps in a tiny jar and when the jar is full I'm gonna remelt them make them into a franken soap instead of throwing them away but we're gonna go find a new soap bar because I am in dire need of a good hair wash. This is currently the situation um I cannot get this to foam and lather up properly now, so we're gonna put it into the jar. I got my solid shampoo, but I haven't tried this one before, but I'm up for it. These are great for cleaning and also for like rough skin on your heels. Uh, they remove chalk uh, buildup really, really easily. So there we go. I just used it this morning. This is amazing. It has a cranberry-esque scent, which is lovely. And it lathers up and foams more than any solid shampoo I've ever seen before. Oh, it was also with cranberry, so perhaps that's why. I sensed it. I made some lunch that has a little bit of a special meaning. This is a very food-heavy look at this point. Oh yeah, baby. So, vegan grandmother's plate, I would say. Literally speaking, because this plate is one of my grandmothers. I wear and use a lot of her things right now, and it's such a pleasure and such a joy. Now, this is a vegan whole foodsy spin and a Danish classic that we call just balls in curry. It's traditionally half veal, half pork. You shape those into small meatballs, you boil them, and then you add them to this very mild curry sauce and use parboiled rice on the side. Now, this is my favorite dish in the world. Obviously, I haven't had it with meat for many years, but the flavor and the combinations is still one of my favorite things. And it's so nostalgic because Objectively speaking, this is not a good dish. I have made many curries that are tons better. This is not the good rice whatsoever, but it's just home. I have a recipe for a plant-based version of this where it's not just broccoli because I didn't want to make the vegan bowls and get them and do the thing, no. I just used what I had in my fridge, so it's with broccoli instead. But that's also proteiny, so. Mm. And it's also good with broccoli. This dish has a little bit of a bad rep. It's not very trendy. It's um, often the, the butt of the joke. I love this dish. I'm packing for this trip that I'm taking. The thing is, I actually don't know what's in this cottage, so I'm just packing a little bit like what we think. Um, but at least bed sheets, pillow covers, jumpers for sure. When I am in a cottage like this, I don't know, it's probably a little bit chilly because that's what it is. So I pack layers, layers, 
for days and days. Tons of clothes, but I really try to keep it on a minimum. Then, and this is just me being silly, but while I'm there, I need to perfect a recipe because I want to upload the tiramisu recipe for you guys. So, we're packing up the things for tiramisu. I have my little strainer, my food processor. Okay, I've never packed a bag like this before. Then I have a piping bag, really necessary. Then my little silicone mold for the lady fingers. Um, and then, because I don't know what shops are there, and there aren't really any like special products that you need to make this vegan, except for vegan whipped cream. And I don't know if that's available there. So we're bringing that from home. Then I have my makeup bag, toothpaste, toothbrush, and dental floss. Then I have a bikini because it's close to the beach. It's gonna be cold, but I'm gonna love it. And my hairbrush and a magazine. I'm reading this about antiques and auctions. Um, I don't, I can't afford any of that right now, but it's nice to dream. And this is, oh, I'm just actually not as heavy as I thought, cool. This is what I'm packing, this is what I'm wearing. I have my little denim skirt, which is super comfortable, and the Organic Basics Flex Cotton Tee. I'm not gonna vlog in the cottage though. I'm just gonna have a good time. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys helped me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!